Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. Happy to have you back if you've been here before, and if not, welcome. You have somehow stumbled into the most obscure Land Cruiser-related uh, yeah, channel on YouTube. So congratulations and welcome. What we do on this channel, amongst other things, is review uh, auction listings from Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids, and yeah, try and see if it represents, you know, the vehicle for sale represents a good value, see if there's any issues that aren't being disclosed, and just otherwise, you know, talk about and discuss, you know, what's what's available and, and try and ultimately predict what the prices uh, will be for that vehicle. So hopefully this gets in the hand of those that are interested in these vehicles and can be a value, uh, yeah, for those those people, but also in, in general, if you're looking for uh, for a Land Cruiser, specifically an 80, 100, or 200 series Land Cruiser. All right, so without further delay, let's go ahead and get into the vehicle we're going to look at today, which is the first Land Cruiser that we're going to look at on cars and bids, uh, and it is this 2004 uh, Land Cruiser. It's white. Um, it's got an interesting look to it, some off-road modifications that we'll go through, uh, but let's go over the high over the high level details first. So this has 200 and almost 82,000 miles on it. Uh, it's got a, looks like a clean title. It's located in Maryland. Uh, and let's see, supposedly the Carfax history report shows no accidents or mileage discrepancies. Uh, it's got some aftermarket modifications and, uh, let's see. All right, let's look at the modifications. It's got a uh, just over a two inch lift kit. It's got some aftermarket wheels, some bigger 35 inch tires, uh, springs, hood mounted wind deflector, which is yeah, kind of kind of cool. Um, let's see what else. Some extra lights, some TRD badges. Ooh, it's got a Land Cruiser Heaven decal, which I'm sure is going to bring yeah big big value. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. Can we look at the Carfax report? Yes. So let's do that. Uh, let's see. So supposedly it's in Maryland. So that's the last owner, owner three, um, spent its time in North Carolina. So that's generally a good outcome for rest. Some parts of North Carolina can um, yeah, leave trucks a little crusty. Uh, as we go through this, I'm just t taking a look and keeping an eye on the mileage, make sure there's nothing goofy going on. I'm not necessarily trusting that Carson Bids got it right. Yeah, but that all looks normal and the usage seems to make sense. Remember, this thing's got you know almost 290,000 miles on it, so it should have been through yeah, <laughs> two or three timing belts already. Um, you know, one thing that you can do is just do a quick search in here for timing belt, see if the Carfax picked up any of those. Looks like it didn't. So let's definitely keep our eye on or keep our eye out for that. Okay, going back to the listing, let's go ahead and jump into the photos. Okay. Um, so what we do is we go through these photos. We look for things that are you know out of the ordinary, don't match up for the mileage, uh, and not seeing anything here. I, I do like this hood deflector, even though it seems like it's a little oxidized and faded. Uh, it's kind of a cool touch. Uh, I've got a buddy that's got one on a 200 series Land Cruiser, and yeah, it just looks great. So um, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary here on the front. Yeah, not digging this Land Cruiser heaven and the TRD badges or the thing, but you know everybody's got their own their own taste. It definitely looks a little stink buggy, so this rear suspension's quite a bit higher uh, in the in the back than I feel like it should. And then one thing we didn't mention early on is um, yeah, these aftermarket technically aftermarket they're they're dealer applied uh, fender flares that are very characteristic of vehicles that are sold out of the southeast part of the United States. Um, kind of interesting. This one came from North Carolina. Wouldn't necessarily expect it, but maybe it still came out of that distributor down in uh, the southeast. Another aesthetic touch here. It looks like these uh, side mirrors have also had some sort of you know black vinyl applied to it. But everything looks about normal. Don't see anything really jumping out at me here. Um, yeah, those those tires are huge. <laughs> um, it looks like there's you know scratches all over the body as you would expect for something with almost two hundred ninety thousand miles. It's got a useless snorkel. <laughs> uh, maybe they've used it, maybe not. And looks like some paint or something else going on in this little valencing. But again, this isn't a beauty queen. It's an old vehicle. Uh, trailer hitch looks like it's been painted. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on corrosion. That's kind of like a telltale to you know just have that on your radar. Looks like the aftermarket lights work. So that's great, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, look, it does go off-road. Yep, 
yeah, nothing really jumping out at me, you know, body wise on these photos looks relatively clean. Not seeing any drastic pink difference, paint differences or, you know, weird, you know, like body gaps or anything like that. All right. So one thing here that just caught my attention, um, yeah, having this wire come out of the door. Yeah. That's not the way to do whatever that wire is used for. You got to find a better way to route that. Okay. Looking for corrosion and dents along this rocker panel, not seeing anything. Uh, it's interesting to note that the style of these, um, steps are a little bit different than what's on, uh, yeah, the earlier, you know, like, uh, you know, 98, 99 Land Cruiser. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't digging the, the sticker far out, but also not digging it since it looks like it, yeah, it's like rolled up. Yeah. Just rip that thing off. Um, but everybody's got their own, their own taste. This f feels a little weird. Um, like kind of like the texture doesn't like m match looks a little goofy. Uh, yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's nothing. I do like the wind deflector and yeah, this paint, it looks weird back here. It seems like there's way too much texture to it. And yeah, definitely aftermarket or yeah, definitely a, a painted hitch. All right. So in this photo, I see some things that, yeah, I'm not digging. So this is on the, let's see the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, it's kind of weird how this door kicks out and overlaps, at least from this angle, uh, over the rear door. Um, but most importantly, I do see some, um, signs of oxidation and rust at the bottom edge of this door. And then also some bubbling kind of towards the front. Um, wouldn't, you know, that's not unheard of for a life in North Carolina, but at least looking from what I've seen in the undercarriage, um, that's kind of uncharacteristic. Uh, yeah, it's not a, yeah, not a great sign, but yeah, it's pretty minimal at the stage. It looks like, like if there was that corrosion on the bottom of the door, I would expect these rockers to have it, but yeah, I'm not seeing it. Um, there's certainly some other modifications that were done to this vehicle in order to get the 35 inch tires to fit. One of them, you can see here, they did a little bit of a cut on this uh, bumper cover. Just something you need to do in order to get these to fit. And then, yeah, back to the rest conversation. I'm seeing a little bit of yeah, rust residue underneath this fender flare. Okay, another thing I'm not crazy about is the uh, yeah the tire shine on these mud terrains. Yeah, that doesn't fit. <laughs> uh, is, is this the other side of the vehicle? Yeah, so that rust stain on this uh, would be the passenger side. Yeah, that looks worse. Maybe it's not rust. I don't know. Doesn't look great. And then yeah, further indication on the front of the vehicle. Yeah, that's not yeah that's not a good look. I feel like we looked at that photo. Okay, so this is the passenger side. That looks awful. You can see the bubbling. And back to the passenger side. Yeah, so they there's a difference. You can see what's that photo's not the the rust, the residue is not the same. Either they wiped it off, like they took this picture and they're like, oh shit, that looks terrible. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think the situation's yeah, worse than what they're um yeah, maybe what they're showing in the other photo, and that's why this one yeah, maybe slipped by them. Yeah, way too much tire shine on those tires. But at least they're big and chunky. All right, getting our first glimpses of kind of like the undercarriage, that'll be a little bit later, but it doesn't look scary. Uh, doesn't necessarily match what you're seeing on, on the door. Um, it just kind of doesn't make sense. I would, if you had rest on the door, I would expect the support here I'm, I'm assuming this is for the running board like those would normally be rusted out so maybe the person here did a great job on you know corrosion prevention on the frame or yeah it just doesn't make doesn't really make sense <laughs> i thought my little cursor was a screw that was in the tire <laughs> all right yeah tires look fine and yeah i'm now moving to the interior um it's surprisingly good shape you know looking at least the steering wheel um, maybe it's been recovered at some point, but yeah, that looks, it looks just fine. Uh, a little bit of wear on, on the other leather. It's probably hard as a rock as you'd expect after, you know, so many years of mileage, but yeah, at least it's not torn. It looks fine. Carpets look good. 
rear seat, you know, while kind of worn into, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is this <laughs> seat belt not attached? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's interesting for sure. A lot of mileage and the dead bug. I wonder if it's behind the glass or the plastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, that seat belt's weird. All right. Uh, I'm kind of seeing other things now. So the, this uh, overhead console, it's not fully attached. I don't know if it just needs to be clicked in or if the tabs are broken. All right. What else? Yeah, it looks like somebody's had their like dirty, grubby hands on it. And look at the stains on the back of the the mirror. Yeah, it's people are gross. You know how like mice when they you know when they move around because they're I guess they're incontinent, right? They just kind of you know pee and poop whenever and wherever they are. I kind of feel sometimes like humans are like that. You can see that like residue, but also if you like go to a restaurant and like the back door of the restaurant, you look at the ground and there's like you know like stains and just residue on the concrete. It's just really gross. We're kind of like disgusting animals. Uh, yeah. And the nets are sagging as you'd expect, but back to that seatbelt, you can see it hanging there, but also the yeah, this weather strip is not applied across that pinch weld. Not sure why they couldn't take care of that in the photo. And then back to the idea of just corrosion here. Don't know if that's a leaf or what that is, but yeah, a little bit of, it looks like, you know, something image going on with the paint and yeah, some rust there. Uh, you can see how these fender flares are just applied over the existing like body. So this is that normal kind of like belt trim that's that's there. All right. Looks like they ended up getting the, I don't know if the seatbelt's attached, but at least they got that weather strip back in place. And it's out of place there. That's a, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm like literally not going back and forth in the photos, am I? No, there's like all of these photos. Some it's on, some it's off. And it looks like they had that body panel off for some reason. And look at the ceiling. That's so gross. Nets are fixed now, all of a sudden. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is interesting. It's like you don't really know what you're getting. Like, what condition is it in? Yeah, that's nasty. <laughs> yeah, look at look at this. I don't know what's going on here. So, yeah, the temperature is reading like 12 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Maybe it was really cold. Um, and maybe this is a different day. I don't know, but it's 36. Uh, and it looks like that max is, you know, they had the... Uh, you know, the air temperature cranked up all the way. Um, so they obviously didn't take the pictures on the same day. Uh, this is maybe a good example between the two. So this was a very cold day. You can see the dash isn't like necessarily like shined up. Um, but in this one, it looks like they applied yeah, some sort of like armor all or other protectant on it. Um, catching just a little glimpse of the shift handle here. It looks like that leather is toast and gross. get the sense I'm not familiar with what shifter handle uh, came with these that doesn't feel like it's right that looks like the shifter handle off of like a forerunner and maybe they swapped it I don't know if, if you've got a like a I don't know 03 04 05 06 Land Cruiser or 07 um, yeah let me know is that the right shift handle for it yeah a little bit of staining here against the door but uh, yeah overall it looks I mean it's got 300,000 miles almost uh, yeah, wear on that. I, f I feel like that's been either painted or, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I've, I've been in and sat in a couple of these, but yeah, I can't remember what that's supposed to look like, but at least the necks are still fit. The nets are still fixed. Oh, and very, I remember I quickly went through these photos the other day. Um, but yeah, they're very proud of their LED <laughs> lights. I think there's, there's like photos of all the lights in here. Or maybe just those two. Yep. Yep. There's more. Very proud of the lights. You know, there's minor little defects here and there. I'm not, not really bringing them up. Um, but I do think that 
the corrosion that you're seeing on the body is something that they have worked to mitigate uh, for the purposes of the listing, but they forgot to yeah remove the photos. Maybe that was intentional. I don't know. All right. So here in the back, it looks like they've got an aftermarket drawer system. Uh, the sides like seems like it's bent. Maybe it can't support a lot of weight. So I'd probably not buy this O or DG DFG off-road uh, kit if it were me. It's got a little, some wiring for a fridge. Uh, rear seat belts have been, or the third row seat belts have been taken out. Yeah, and on this uh, wiring for like a fridge or something else, yeah, I'm not sure why these screws are just sitting out, if that's important or not. Yeah, all the rest of this looks cool and normal. Uh, we mentioned earlier in one of the other videos, you know, that this handle on the upper uh, hatch is a, is a good telltale. So I, I do see corrosion product there. Yeah. For me, you know, buying a vehicle, like I wouldn't waste my time if I could just get a single photo of that. And I saw that. Yeah. I would, I would pass on a vehicle, but I know, um, yeah, this is actually fine for probably most uh, Rust Belt locations, but yeah, not for me. All right, moving to the engine bay. Uh, let's look for things that are yeah out of place or don't make sense. Very proud of the work that Land Cruiser Heaven did for them. I wonder, I think Land Cruiser Heaven has an office or their original office was in that area. So maybe this is an employee or somebody who took, took it there. But it looks like it's got this SLEE aftermarket uh, air compressor and battery bracket. It's got a, another battery there. I wonder how they're connected. Um, this wire, I don't, looks like they've got like the little fuse block here. Yeah. I'd be interested to see where they ran the wire. I don't, it looks like maybe, yeah, it comes through here. Um, you know, the power steering hoses come off and go down there. Kind of a weird routing for sure. Having the little fuse block just zip tied there is yeah, kind of gross and sloppy, especially when you have like this nice place to mount it. Um, yeah, and then I see the wiring come from here, maybe running right here, um, and then, yeah, coming back around. At least it looks like it's got some, like, thick sleeve to it, but probably not the routing that I would have chosen. Yeah, so that's probably coming up here, and then, yeah, who knows yeah, what else is going on. It looks like there's a whole bunch of other wiring for those lights. Yeah, I'd <laughs> maybe the lights all work. I would either rip it out or double check it all before, uh, yeah, cruising on down the road. Looks like it's got an aftermarket, you know, under hood light that could be handy. Yeah, I, I saw the shine on this photo, uh, like on this engine cover, and I thought maybe that the previous photos like didn't have that, but yeah, it looks like it, it was. It's all posted detail. You know, another thing to keep in mind as you go through these photos, you know, look for these VIN tags, you know, the VIN stickers on the body panels. Um, you know, each each body panel will have one of those. Um, so always just kind of have your eye out for those and and you keep tabs on that. All right, so underneath that shiny engine cover is, yeah, the engine. Looks like it's been off-road, which with those big tires it should have been. But yeah, not seeing anything yeah, really jumping out at me here. Just dirty. Not seeing any, yeah, like oil drips or yeah, other staining. Um, yeah. All right, moving to the undercarriage. Okay, moving to the undercarriage. Uh, yeah, looks like we've got some aftermarket shocks. Um, standard control arms, you know, whether or not you need different control arms with the two and a half inch lift is a you know, different question, but yeah, it's a lot of tire to be moving around. Um, and surprisingly the, like the rear diff, like this looks pretty good. Um, especially considering that there's rust on the, on the doors. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense to me. So they must've either done some sort of treatment or yeah, maybe they just over the years they've stayed on top of it. Like I don't see, you know, like paint um, you know, overspray. So 
and maybe they've just kind of kept up on it, but this doesn't look too bad to work on. So besides that, that body rest, that's kind of it. You see a little, little crustiness here that that's kind of covered up, but really it just, it doesn't look that bad. Doesn't, doesn't look like something that would have rusty doors. Yeah. Right there. Look at that. That's something's going on under there. <laughs> maybe it got a rock stuck up there and yeah, who knows? All right. Yeah, peeking up on the underside. This is, you know, usually where the rust is the worst. You know, up front you get oil leaks and that can kind of provide a little protection. Um, sometimes here in the back is where it's the worst. Yeah, this doesn't look too scary. Um, and the body, um, you know, behind it looks okay. I, I do see, this could either be factory applied stuff. Uh, so like a little overspray, but it could have also been spray paint too. But yeah, really the frame doesn't look that bad. It probably wouldn't be too bad to work on. Uh, the, the lift that they put on it, so in addition to, I think it said like ARB springs, looks like it has some aftermarket torsion bars. Um, yeah. So those could probably be adjusted to get this thing to settle out and to look right. If you had the time, you double check that frame number and make sure that matches the VIN. Uh, and just some more detail, close-up photos of, of the undercarriage. Um, CV boots on both sides yeah, look like they're in good shape. This one looks like almost new. So that's good to not have to yeah, deal with that if you, if you pick this up. There's there's tons of like du duplicate photos. That's so weird. Um, this is a good shot of the undercarriage to get a sense for if anything's like, or the yeah the engine bay, seeing if anything's leaking. But yeah, I don't I don't see anything. Everything looks pretty dry. Yep, and then you know, there's the spec sheet from uh, you know, the Toyota website. More another random photo of of the LED light <laughs> that they're so proud of, and then yeah, we've got a timing belt sticker from uh, February of 2017 at 218,000 miles. So not not due yet. Um, you're at five years. I, I, it's either yeah, like 90,000 miles and like six years or something like that. So something to you know. Will be need to, will need to be done at some point in the future, but yeah, not now. All right, so that's all the photos. Um, sometimes what cars and bids they include uh, videos. I don't know if there are any. It looks like there is a video here. I haven't gone over those, but yeah, if you're interested, definitely check those out. Um, and let's see. It looks like there is a reserve on this auction, and it's currently at uh, eighty one hundred dollars. Um, that's a lot of miles. Um, you know, these motors, they can certainly handle it. Um, you know, the newer suspension, you know, helps mitigate some of that. Um, I don't know. This, this could be, this could be something. I, I don't know if I would even spend the 80, 8,100 for it. Um, yeah. So my guess is, and it's got five days left. So my guess is that it, yeah, this thing goes up to, I don't know. It probably sells at like, what, four, 14 or Let's say in a cars and bids, sometimes it doesn't get as high as like a bring a trailer auction would for a similar vehicle, I think. Um, yeah, so my guess is, yeah, $13,150. Uh, and I bet the reserve is less than that. So, yeah, I don't know if uh, cars and bids will tell you where the reserve is, but yeah, if there is one, I, I bet he's got it, you know, like 11000 or something like that. I don't know. There's going to be somebody crazy who bids this up to like, you know, 15,000, but yeah, it's in my opinion, it's totally unreasonable. Although it is a 2004. So it's got some benefits over the older ones. So maybe this goes a little bit higher. All right. I'm going to officially revise. I think it's going to go to 14,600, 14,600. So that's my guess. And then yeah, reserve. Yeah. Maybe 12 K. All right. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed it. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think on price too. I was kind of like all over the place initially. So yeah, I'd be interested to, yeah, to hear what you think. Anyway, thanks for coming. Have a good day.